So next speaker, um, we are going to actually um, have a Dr. Michael uh, Van den Heuvel. Um, Dr. Michael Van den Heuvel, he, he actually um, is an expert in adult and congenital cardiac anesthesiologist at the Kent University Hospital in Belgium. Um, he finished his anesthesiology training in 2014, really 10 years ago. And he afterwards uh, went to the Utrecht University Hospital in the Netherlands to do like a one year residency over there. He takes part of the annual congenital ca uh, cardiac care missions in Kingali in Rwanda, and his research uh, focuses mainly in uh, perioperative applications of the pressure volume loop uh, framework. So, uh, with uh, any further delay, uh, we are going to go ahead and then hear him uh, for his RV function assessment and uh, how can we build uh, the RV echo loops. Please go ahead, Michael. Okay, thank you, Jacobo. Good morning, everybody. So my name is uh, Michael. I work as a cardiac anesthesiologist uh, in Belgium, in Ghent. Um, I have no interest, uh, conflict of interest to uh, declare, but I would really like to thank the organizers of TPES for this invitation. Um, I'm really honored and happy to be here. So I will present some results from our research group on the feasibility of clinical pressure volume loop creation using routinely available monitoring. So let's start with a quick overview. After a short introduction, I will focus on the methods of pressure volume loop acquisition in patients. First, I will briefly discuss the gold standard, which is conductance technology. And next, I will explain how we created a novel application that allows pressure volume loops to be created in a clinical setting. Next, an overview of the research our group has performed so far will be presented, and I will uh, follow up with a mildly critical overview of some parameters that are proposed as surrogates for clinical application of the, in my opinion, really powerful pressure volume uh, loop framework. And then to conclude, I hope to interest some of you with the opportunities that we feel can result from the development of this application. So I don't have to explain to this audience that the right ventricle, once dubbed the forgotten ventricle, is prognostically relevant in the perioperative setting. As an example, um, this 850 patient study showed that after multivariate analysis, uh, right ventricular ejection fraction emerges as an important predictor of cardiac mortality. This has been confirmed for functional stages as well, and in multiple settings from uh, coronary artery disease to pulmonary hypertension to the perioperative left ventricular assist device implantation setting. So here you can see that the authors could demonstrate kind of those dependent effects of the right ventricular ejection fraction uh, on cardiac death, major adverse uh, cardiac events, as well as all cause mortality. So if we start to focus on the pressure volume framework, um, as you know, continuous plotting of both the ventricular uh, parameters uh, allow information from a single heartbeat to be captured in a counterclockwise rotating loop. Um, and with that loop, multiple parameters can be derived, such as the arterial elastance, which allows assessment of afterload. And um, then multiple inotropic uh, states um, parameters can be investigated especially when multiple loops with quickly changing preloads are compared, resulting in the end-systolic pressure-volume relationship and also the preload recruitable stroke work. But additionally, the ratio of arterial and ventricular elastance um, represents the functioning of the ventricle within its environment, which is called coupling, as was already elaborated on by Professor Guarancino. And lastly, but also very important in my opinion, um, there's also a lot of energetic and oxygen balance param uh, parameters that can be studied. So overall, this results really in a powerful and mostly load independent framework um, for hemodynamic monitoring. Um, the gold standard for pressure volume loop acquisition is the conductance catheter technology. These uh, catheters measure instantaneous ventricular volume based on the electrical conductance uh, of the volume of blood in the ventricle surrounding the catheter. Then combined with its integrated continuous pressure monitoring, real-time loops are obtained. So here we see some footage from uh, our lab. 
It, this was done during a biventricular experiment in pigs. On the left, you see the square-shaped left ventricular loops, and on the right, more triangular-shaped uh, RV loops. And then the control preload re restriction allows the construction of the end systolic pressure volume loop uh, relationship, as well as the preload recruitable stroke work slope, which were both uh, indicators of the ventricular systolic function. However, the major issues with this conductance technology relate to the cost and the need for uh, dedicated equipment, uh, not forgetting their invasive nature, especially for the left ventricle. So we set out to, to develop an alternative so that the pressure volume framework can be applied in a really clinical bedside setting. And the basic idea is simply to merge a volume time relationship with a pressure time relationship. And then ECG can be used to synchronize both races into a pressure volume loop. The advances in 3D echo make VTR determination more and more reliable and easier to reproduce. Pressure traces can be obtained using routine hemodynamic monitoring with fluid-filled catheters. Uh, multiple beat gated 3D echo acquisitions provide really reliable volume measurements, even for the anatomically complex uh, right ventricle. And this is really important, especially on the right side, uh, because correct volume measurements um, are difficult on the right ventricle, as you all know, because of the crescent-shaped anatomy and with contractions in multiple directions. This all makes uh, straightforward, simplified parameters, in my opinion, less trustworthy. So if we take a step back and if we look at this methodology, it's easy to define alternative combinations for loop creations. Well, the most straightforward choice is to combine a ventricular pressure with a ventricular volume. It's important to realize that multiple strategies can be employed to obtain a ventricular pressure trace. For the LV, direct catheterization is invasive, but possible, for example, in a cat lab setting. Alternatively, the mitral regurgitation signal can be used to reconstruct left ventricular pressure traces. And for the right ventricle, it's a bit easier as a pulmonary artery catheter is clinically acceptable in multiple settings. But additionally, and this is especially interesting for the left ventricular assessment, one can opt to combine the 3D echo volume from your echo uh, with a peripheral arterial signal, thus creating pressure volume arcs. They still contain many useful systolic parameters. A totally different approach would be to substitute the volume trace with a strain signal, thus creating pressure strain loops. They show promising results, obliviating the need for 3D echo measurements altogether. So um, some groups have tried uh, these approaches, and one of the first uh, to explore this methodology was Herberg uh, and colleagues in 2013. They created pressure volume loops for uh, the left ventricle and the right ventricle using 3D echo and a specific pressure wire, and you can see here, uh, in 25 children and six adolescents. It was feasible in all, including in neonates, before and after dilatation of a pulmonary stenosis, as you can appreciate on the left image. On the right side, left side pressure volume loops are plotted when paced at different rates. Another example is from 2017, when Huang et al. Um, made pressure volume loops in patients receiving a right heart cat, uh, catheterization. They combined 3D volumes with both direct pressure measurements, but also with tricuspid regurg signals uh, to base on for a pressure derivation. Okay, so now we'll focus on what our research group in Ghent has been doing. Um, our first step was to collect biventricular animal data and uh, to obtain this, we instrumented 10 pigs through the carotid artery for the left ventricle and the jugular vein for the right ventricle. Uh, both ventricles were thus instrumented with a conductance catheter as well as a pulmonary artery catheter. And then we next positioned an inflatable balloon in the inferior cable vein and performed 3D uh, echo for the volume measurements. 
And this trace uh, represents typical acquisition where the ventricular pressure in orange and black drops during a progressive inferior cable vein balloon occlusion. Simultaneous echo measurements, um, we used four beat gated average, uh, are depicted by the blue rectangles. And as such, um, this is a re representative result from a baseline left ventricular, for example, loop. During cable vein occlusion, the loop re regresses to the down left corner, and the resulting slope and preload pre recruitable pre stroke work can be calculated. During the butamine infusion, we saw the expected rise in the ancestolic elastins and the preload recruitable stroke work. So these uh, loops are just made with the pulmonary artery catheter in the left ventricular position combined with the echo measurements. Um, here you can, for example, examine the preload recruitable stroke work measured with the gold stand on the left, the conductance, as well with the novel echo pressure technique on the right. So the results were uh, similar. Additionally, using only the arterial line instead of a ventricular, left ventricular uh, line, uh, provided reliable surrogate pressure volume arcs with also similar derived inotropic measurements. It also didn't really matter if we used a peripheral or a central arterial line. So next we start playing around with clinical data and I'll show you some examples. Here is a left ventricular pressure trace from a cat lab patient uh, that was used to create a pressure volume loop. Uh, here you see the same approach, but then using an arterial line trace with the resulting pressure volume arc. Um, and when the patient presents with a significant, preferably central mitral regurge, this can also be used for LV pressure monitoring. And this is a, just a similar trace, but for a right-sided tricuspid insufficiency. Okay, so these promising proof of concept results made Ekmaroman, sorry, <laughs> my partner in crime, and I to decide to develop an online application in the R programming language. Our goal was to allow clinical researchers to make their own loops from clinically available monitoring data. And here you can see the interface of the resulting application. The link to this version is depicted on the bottom of the slide, so feel free to try it. Up to four loops can be co-created using the black, pink, blue, and green buttons in the left upward corner, like, uh, allowing a pressure and volume, for example, to be combined. And it's important to know that you can either start from a raw exported data file from your monitor, uh, but you can also uh, just take a picture of your, of your uh, trace of, on your monitor, of your pressure trace, and digitize it, digitize it with a free app, for example, the Engorge Digitizer app. You can even do this on a mobile device. And then here you see the pressure time relationship and the volume time relationship. So the elastance is calculated, and on the right you see the pressure volume loop. Um, when all traces are important, Adjustment can be made afterwards to optimize the antistolic point recognition, the choice of the volume intercept, etc. And then you get multiple derived parameters. They are automatically calculated, such as the ventricular and arterial elastins and their coupling, but also cardiac output and energetic parameters. Here is another example where we imported both a baseline loop in black. Um, next to a leg raised loop in pink. Multiple loops with different preloads can be combined in a so-called multi-loop analysis where multi-loop uh, ancestolic elastins as well as preload recruitable stroke work um, are computed. So next we compared the performance of our application with a data set from the uh, well-known Harvey simulator. So both the LV and the RV parameters were identical when uh, we imported the export Harvey data into our, our, our own application. And then the next phase was to perform an observational uh, study in consenting uh, adult elective cardiac surgery patients. Um, after induction, before bypass, a right ventricular data set was recorded using 3D echo and a pulmonary artery catheter. In black, you can see the baseline loop that we constructed in this, in this, in this manner. 
Uh, during disinfection, while the legs were raised, we acquired a, a second data set. Um, the effect of this leg raise was that the loop shifted to the right and up, as you would expect from a fluid challenge in this population. And next, we performed a third data set uh, acquisition when we applied a sustained area pressure of 20 centimeters of water. And then you see the uh, loop shifting to the left and up, and especially the uh, arterial elastance uh, rises with a drop in stroke volume. The last acquisition we did was just after chest opening, and we can see the uh, resulting drop of loading in loading conditions. So here we plot uh, the pooled data from the 12 patients. Um, heart rate remained stable in all conditions. And in pink, you can see the leg raise conditions. So we know it's a rise in anti-historic volume, the resulting cardiac output rise, while ventricular arterial coupling and global efficiency remained stable. Here in blue are the effects of the sustained PEEP, so the uh, afterload rise. The arterial elastance show Elastins showed a marked increase, which was not the case for other conditions. Cardiac output fell, and notable effect on ventricular arterial coupling and efficiency was also recorded. So overall, these results strengthened our belief in the feasibility of clinical pressure volume loop generation. We are starting follow-up studies to further explore this methodology. The first setup is to construct pressure volume loops in baseline and during leg raise, both before and during the butamine infusion to explore the inotropic parameters of the framework. Additionally, proposed single beat methods can be investigated and compared using our app. An exciting area in the application of the PVL app on, is uh, potentially on the RV function prognostication in ELVET implant settings, as um, Dr. Boucher will later elaborate on. Further, Observational data from the perioperative setting of pulmonary embolus, embolus removal is also ongoing. Finally, pressure strain loops also merit our investigation, and the app allows a direct comparison of the PV loops with the PS loops. So Jacob Labus uh, will later give a comprehensive review of the applications of the strain measurements. Here we can focus on the pressure strain loops which are just created by plotting the pressure to the strain instead of the volume. And then a similar counterclockwise loop results. So numerous research groups have evaluated the applicability of pressure strain loops. And on the left, you can see the effects, for example, of ischemia on the pressure strain loop as created by invasive sonocrystal technology, as well as echo. On the right, the image comes from Chan et al. Evaluated uh, the effects of hypertension and cardiomyopathy on GWI, which is the global myocardial work, and GWE, the global myocardial efficiency. So they saw that hypertension resulted in a rise of the LV work performed, but with stable overall efficiency. On the other hand, cardiomyopathy, either non-ischemic or ischemic, resulted in a drop in myocardial work performed as well as myocardial efficiency. Some exciting research by Richter uh, found a moderate correlation between pressure volume uh, stroke work, measured invasively, and pressure strain loop echo-based acquisitions. And so we are also developing, in addition to our EMV looper application, allowing pressure strain loops to be created as well. This creates opportunities to directly compare uh, both kind of loops. Okay, so now we will take a small detour to look at the many surrogates that have been suggested to try and unlock the pressure volume loop framework in a clinical setting. Um, overall, the surrogates come at a disadvantage of approximations, and I feel that they, they may hollow out the validity of the parameters. In the calculation of the end stock uh, elastin slope, for example, the volume intercept is often neglected. And it's been already been described that um, this is not a constant uh, point for every patient. Additionally, the original end systolic elastin slope can only be derived from multiple loops with diminishing preloads, as seen here in the, the figure A. This is cumbersome in clinical setting, and many groups have tried to investigate single beat approaches. The most evaluated of these for the left ventricle was proposed by Chen in, already in 2001. They developed a method 
using echo derived ejection fraction, stroke volume, pre ejection time, non invasive systolic and diastolic blood pressure, as well as an estimated normalized ventricular elastance at onset of ejection. It needs to be stressed that it relies on multiple assumptions, but it is the most investigated proposal to date. And then for the right ventricle, a Belgian group by Brimiul and colleagues proposed a mathematical model and to estimate the pressure as it would result from an isovolumetric contraction. So to obtain this, they performed a fifth order polynomial function to extrapolate the isovolumetric parts of the RV, which is here depicted by my red one, and the RV pressure trace to a point, point P in the image. This point is then used as a second point together with the end systolic point formula loop to create the end systolic pressure volume loop relationship. Um, it do thus relies on assumptions. Then concerning the arterial elastance, Kelly proposed a simplified method for left-sided arterial elastance, and it's based on the maximal systolic instead of the end systolic pressure. It needs to be taken into account that this measure was only based on data from 10 adults um, for normal tensive and six hypertensive patients. Additionally, it needs to be taken into account that um, all errors resulting from assumptions in the arterial or ventricular elastance can also be carried over in the estimations of coupling. So multiple non-invasive surrogates for the RV uh, pressure uh, PA coupling have been proposed, as Professor Guarancino already uh, discussed. Um, their performance could also be evaluated compared to the results of the looper application. Another example comes from the fascinating um, retrospective analysis by Tello, in which data from 52 patients with pulmonary artery hypertension were analyzed. They aim to compare single beat pressure volume loops as measured invasively and using single beat approximation by Abrimiul with echo derived surrogates of right ventricular ventric ventricular arterial coupling. So overall, they found a moderate correlation with the single beat method. They used Spearman's row, which is less stringent than the Pearson correlation uh, coefficient, and it was still quite low. This is absolutely, uh, absolutely worth further exploring, but major questions arise for our setting, such as the retrospective design in solely uh, pulmonary artery hypertension patients. So to conclude, I would say that uh, I believe that bringing the pressure volume loop framework which was previously really well validated in the experimental setting to a clinical setting that promises significant advantages. Uh, we could show that this pressure volume loop generation using clinically available monitoring is feasible and the EMV looper application uh, may facilitate this. So to me, these are really exciting times. I believe uh, we should further explore this methodology as it could be used to unlock the powerful pressure volume loop framework in multiple clinical research settings, such as RV prognostication and LVET implant settings. Additionally, it can be used to compare a range of proposed hemodynamic surrogates for the framework. So we are really looking for groups to cooperate in this venture. So let's connect. Here are our contacts. You can email me if you have any ideas for improvements of the application or if you want to collaborate. Um, we also have a manual to assist with the first steps for use of the looper feel free to contact me. So many thanks to all my uh, co-researchers, especially Eck, uh, and all my friends from Ghent, Zurich, Aas, and Köln. It's really great to work with you guys. Um, and thank you all for your attention. It was really a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much, Michael. That was great. Uh, I was really impressed by, by all the work that you guys are doing in your, in your lab. Uh, congratulations.